Today's Bible study is titled The Life Which I Now Live. Typically, when I've taught through Galatians in the past, I cannot wait to get to our verses, today. And I must confess that, in the past, I've not adequately addressed the context of these verses before those whom I've taught, and thus missed the full intent of what and why Paul wrote this. Today, we'll be reminded that the context of what are Paul's spirit-inspired statements in Galatians 2 verses 20-21 is the record of what Paul said to Peter regarding an instance where Peter walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel while with Paul in Antioch, as we mentioned, yesterday. Having just spoken of what he said to Peter that his very calling as apostle to the Gentiles, had as its foundation the fact that Israel's kingdom and new covenant offer was off the table until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, Romans 11:25b. And also, regarding the kingdom gospel, Paul's ministry could be viewed as the things which I destroyed and certainly was not seeking to build again, otherwise, he observes I make myself a transgressor, by so doing, Paul now continues addressing Peter. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians 2 verses 20-21 One of the most powerful statements in all of Scripture is here recorded in Paul's statement to Peter, let's break this down. Having preceded what is Galatians 2 verses 20 to 21 with the statement to Peter, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God, Paul now addresses the path to life in Christ and it is one of crucifixion in order to be dead to the law, we must quite literally be able to say, I am crucified with Christ, positionally. So, at point of belief of the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, God takes us out of our union with fallen Adam and places us in union with Christ wherein nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Before salvation, all that was true of Adam was true of us. After salvation, now all that is true of Christ is true of us, for, Christ liveth in me. What a deal! As a result of our union with Christ in His crucifixion, we are baptized into His death, Romans 6, 3b, but it doesn't stop there, for also we are buried with Him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Romans 6, 4b So, there is now newness of life, Romans 6.4b, such that, as Paul told Peter, the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, Galatians 2 verse 20. And don't miss this as, once again, Paul speaks to this being by the faith of the Son of God and not limited to any puny little faith that we might have. And, as with the Galatians 2 verse 16 mention of the faith of Jesus Christ, you'll only find the correct wording for Galatians 2 verse 20 in the authorized King James Version, KJVA. Does it matter, the student of the word might ask? And the answer, it most certainly does. For after salvation, the life which I now live in the flesh being lived by the faith of the Son of God, where faith is described by the article the, is hugely different than living by, no article, the believer's faith in the Son of God, NASB 1995 Galatians 2, colon 20b. In or of, the faith or just faith articles and prepositions matter. And it certainly matters greatly whether the life that believers now live in the flesh, post-salvation, is a life in which we live by faith in the Son of God, NASB, or live by the faith of the Son of God, KJVA, for one depends upon his faith and the other upon our faith. For living by the faith of the one who loved me and gave himself up for me is infinitely more powerful than attempted living by my puny faith. And the student of the word will ask why, example, why did so-called translators change the whole basis of life after salvation in versions after the authorized King James Version of the Bible? And this is a very good question. Finally, the Apostle Paul, returning to the closing out of the record of his discourse with the Apostle Peter, regarding the law living of them who were of the circumcision who came from James, the Lord's half-brother, notes that I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What an incredible statement of the obvious answer to those of the circumcision that might lean towards a law requirement not borne out by Israel's new covenant, the offer of which was paused and thus not available. 
and to suggest otherwise was to frustrate the grace of God. Simple, blunt, and obvious, yet, much of religious Christianity misses this, what's so important about the mystery? Part 1. Believer, understand that blending another gospel, example the gospel of the kingdom with its imposing of circumcision and obedience of the Mosaic law, with the gospel of the grace of God, example which has no other requirement than salvation by simple belief by grace through the faith of Christ, will only frustrate the grace of God. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.